Now we will look at the second lecture, the Gospel. We have gone through these uh, verses uh, already, so we will explore them once more in a very quick fashion. Lecture 2 is the Gospel. The Gospel is something unique, but Paul says there is a different Gospel. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, it says, The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So Satan, the God of this age, is blinding the people so that they cannot see the light of the glory of the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ is being blinded now. It's being hidden away by Satan so that people cannot believe this. Even though the scriptures were written, all of this book was given to us for this one purpose, Satan is attacking this. Satan is blinding us so that we cannot see the gospel. And even churches are being blinded. This was not something said to any unbeliever. Second Corinthians was written to a big church, a well-established church, the church of Corinth. And was this the second letter written to them. That means he's talking to them. You're not believing in the gospel. The thing you're believing is not the gospel, says Paul. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 to 9, he says, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you by the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Here Paul is very, very um, strict with this. Paul was very flexible in many matters, but he was very strict in this. This is the only gospel and you're turning to a different gospel. And he says, which is, no, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. There are some people who are trying to pervert you. The church of Galatia believed in God. They had received the good news, but they were believing something different, something different than Paul believed. And Paul warned them and he said, but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preached to you, let him be eternally condemned. He says, even if an angel from heaven comes and he preaches something different, or even I come later and preach something different, you should condemn me. You should curse me or curse that angel. Why? Because it's a different gospel. It's something different than what I have, what I have said. And he repeats it. As we have already said, so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let, let him be eternally condemned. And it was not only the church of Galatia. 2 Corinthians 11.4 says, For if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we preached, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it easily enough. So many churches here had a different gospel. The church of Galatia, the church of Corinth, had a different gospel. Even though they believed similarly, to the gospel, even though it, they had the concept of Jesus Christ, they had the concept of God, they had the concept of the, of the law, they had the concept of being born again, but yet Paul is telling them your gospel is different. Your gospel is not really a gospel. There is only one gospel. There is only one true gospel and you're believing a different gospel. So Paul was very strict, very energetic in condemning this, these other gospels. Then what is the true gospel? What is the true gospel that the Bible tells us? As we have seen before, the gospel is not something that can be changed by the interpretations of a prophet. This is not something that can be changed because of our own thoughts or culture. The gospel is only one. And Paul is saying in Romans chapter 16 verses 25 to 27, he says, Now to him who, to who is able to establish you by my gospel, he says, it is not only a gospel, it is my gospel. By my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God so that all nations might believe and obey Him to the only wise God be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen. So Paul says, this is my gospel, but my gospel is a mystery that was hidden before, but now is revealed through the prophetic writings. Before it was hidden, now this is revealed, and this revelation is about Jesus, who is a Christ. Romans chapter 1, verses 1 to 4, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. I am an apostle for the gospel of God now. But what is this gospel of God? 
the gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Okay, so he promised this gospel in the Holy Scriptures through the prophets. But what is this gospel about? It says, regarding his son, who as to his human nature was a descendant of David, and who through the spirit of holiness was declared with power to be the son of God by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. So here he says, this gospel is not about anything else. This gospel is only about this son of God, who as to his human nature in his flesh he was a descendant of David that means he was a descendant of the king that that God instituted and God has, had promised him to come from David and he said he was declared with power to be the son of God by his resurrection he was powerful he was declared by God through his resurrection resurrected means that God himself resurrected him only God can resurrect someone so he was declared with power to be, uh, by the resurrection to be the Son of God. That means God Himself gave the evidence that He is the Son of God with power. This is what His Gospel was about. Acts 9.22, it says, Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is a Christ. This was Paul's first message. And his first message after, after receiving the Lord was Jesus is a Christ. Acts 17, 2-3, 20 years after this message, Paul says, As his custom was, Paul went into the synagogue, and on three Sabbath days, he reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and proving that the Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead. This Jesus I am proclaiming to you is the Christ, he said. Paul didn't change his message. His message was one. Through the scriptures, in three weeks, in, uh, throughout three weeks, he proved to the people that the Christ had to be born, he had to die and to resurrect, and that Jesus, that I am telling you, this Jesus is the Christ that is in the Bible. That is what he was reasoning with them. Acts 18.5 when, when Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul devoted himself exclusively to preaching, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. So here we see him in Corinth as well. And when they came to Macedonia, Paul devoted himself exclusively to preaching. He was exclusively preaching. Only, he was only preaching. In other versions of the Bible, it says he was, he was taken by the Holy Spirit. He was bound by the Holy Spirit. That means the Holy Spirit filled him and when the Holy Spirit filled him, there was only one message in his life. It was proclaiming to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. So Paul's message was only one. Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Son of God. The true gospel I am preaching to you is that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of, the, of God. This was the gospel that Paul preached. But not only Paul. If only Paul had preached this way, it may be a reference to us. It may be some good message. But it was not only Paul. It was all the early church. Let us see. In Acts chapter 2, verse 36, uh, Peter's first message, after the Holy Spirit came upon him, there were 15 nations, right? And then Peter preached to them. And the conclusion of his preaching was Acts 2, 36. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. This Jesus that you crucified is Lord and Christ. That was Peter's message. Acts 5.42 Day after day in the temple courts and from house to house they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is Christ. So here we see the apostles of the early church. They were day after day in the temple courts and from house to house. Not only in the temple, not only when they were in church, but also in the houses, all houses. They were, they were doing this. And what did they do? They never stopped. They never stopped teaching and proclaiming. Who do you teach? Who are the people you must teach? The people who have already believed. Who are the ones who you must proclaim to? The people who have not yet believed. So even to believers, even to non-believers, their message was the same. Jesus is the Christ and this is the good news. The good news that Jesus is the Christ. That was their message for all apostles. Acts 18, 24 to 28. Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos native of Alexandria came to Ephesus. He was a learned man with a thorough knowledge of the scriptures. 
He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and he spoke with great fervor and taught about Jesus accurately, though he only knew the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the, in the synagogue. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they invited him to their home and explained to him the way of God more adequately. When Apollos wanted to go to Achaia, the brothers encouraged him and wrote to the disciples there to welcome him. On arriving, he was a great help to those who by grace had believed, for he vigorously refuted the Jews in public debate, proving from the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ. Apollos was a learned man. He was very intellectual. He knew many things. He knew the Bible well. He was very passionate. He was very good at speaking. He was very um, passionate in order to speak the word of God. He was a very great man. He knew the scriptures. He was very eloquent. He had a great passion. And he spoke about Jesus. But when Priscilla and Aquila, who are disciples of Paul, heard him, they thought, something here is wrong. Something here is lacking. He only knew the baptism of John. So, he ex uh, so they explained, these two explained to this great sage, to this great theologian, the way of God more adequately. And after that, Apollos' message changed. Apollos' message was transformed. And what was his message? Verse 28 tells us that he refuted the Jews vigorously by proving to them through the scriptures, through the word of God, he proved to them. He evidenced to them that Jesus was the Christ. So Peter, Apollos, the early church members, they all preached the same thing. Now Apostle John, he says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 1, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is saved. That was John's message. So John, Peter, uh, Apollos, Priscilla and Aquila, the Apostles, Paul, they all preached the same message. Jesus is the Christ. This was the only message of the early church. Yes, they spoke about many other things, but their conclusion, their core message was Jesus is the Christ. But nowadays, we have lost this message. Many Christians do not even know that Jesus is the Christ. Many people do not even know what is the gospel. If you ask 100 Christians what the gospel is, they will answer 100 different answers. But the early church was different. The early church had just one message, that Jesus is the Christ. This is the good news. This is the gospel. That Jesus as the Christ has come and he has solved every problem that ails man. Every problem for man is already solved in Jesus as a Christ. Spiritual problems, even physical problems, that is all, so, all solved. Now we are with the Father through Jesus Christ. He is the Son of God. He was declared with power to be the Son of God by His resurrection. This is the Gospel. But many people, although they believe in Jesus, although they believe in Christ, or they say they believe in Christ, they believe differently. Like the Church of Galatia, like the church of Corinth, a different gospel, a different Jesus. If we believe a different gospel, and if we believe a different Jesus, then we have a different spirit, not the Holy Spirit, but a different spirit. And Paul was saying, I fear that you will be deceived just like Eve by the serpent. I fear this. Do not be deceived. There is no other gospel. There is no other thing, but people come to you proclaiming another Jesus, a different Jesus. This Jesus might have the same name, but he is different. Do not accept them. If you accept another Jesus, another gospel, another spirit, you put up with it good enough. This is saying the church has not been strict in their definition of the gospel. They have accepted many things. Their church is now mixed with many things but they have lost hold of the gospel. And being mixed with many things means you do not have the gospel anymore. So Paul, that, why, that was why he was saying you are believing in a different gospel. But the gospel I proclaim to you is the true gospel. And what gospel did Paul proclaim? Jesus is Christ, the Son of God. This was also the message of Peter. This was also John's message. This was also Priscilla and Aquila's message. This was also Paulus' message. All the early church believed this way. And the early church is on our model. So that is why we must believe knowingly that Jesus is the Christ. What is the gospel of the Bible? It is written, John chapter 20, verse 31, once again. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, 
you may have life in his name. This is why the Bible was written. And the apostles of the early church, the members of the early church, did not deviate from this message. They did not stray away from this message. They were one with the Bible. They were one with the Word of God. They were under the Word of God. And since the Word of God says, everything is written so that you may believe, they preached also so that people may believe only one thing, that Jesus is Christ. That is why Acts chapter 4 verse 42 says, proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. The gospel that Jesus is the Christ. Yes, gospel means good news. But what is the good news? Oh, God will bless you. God will give you a new car. Is that the good news? Or God will heal you. God, God will give you prosperity. Or God will make your life great. Is that the good news? For the early church, there was only one good news. The good news that Jesus is a Christ. Many things can be good news. But the good news of God, the good news of the early church was Jesus is a Christ. We must believe in Him this way in order for us to have true life and for the true church to be rising. Amen? Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for we, you have allowed us now to look at two very important facts. The Bible is your infallible word, Lord, and it explains Jesus as a Christ. All the early church also explained the gospel as believing in Jesus as a Christ. Lord, now let us delve deeper into this word. Let us go deeper, step by step, by your word, by your gospel, so that we may be also able to, sell, to save our countries. Lord, we do not want to believe as we believed before in our religious life, but we want to be, Lord, saved by your word. Allow us the spirit of discernment, allow us the spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that this word may be revealed to us. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ, we pray. Amen.